you know, hopefully some of our listeners are out there. Yeah. Um, you know, you see me walking around. I'm, I'm quite easy to spot walking around out there. You did um, get him a bourbon road shirt, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it will be in, but unfortunately his shirts won't be in until the 13th of September, which is the week after. You know why? Oh man. Oh, don't do it. Special order. Extra special material. order and it's going to have to be big. man. <laughs> Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Randy. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. We would like to thank Tommy and Gwen Mitchell from Logheads Home Center for supporting this episode of the Bourbon Road. Find out more about their fine rustic furniture at logheadshomecenter.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Jim Shannon. I'm Randy Minnick. And this is The Bourbon Road. And today, we've got a special guest, uh, but we've got a twist on it, don't we, Randy? I think so, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. What I'd like to do, I think, is uh, rather than getting right into the first pour today, I'd kind of like to give a, a rundown on what this show's about, since we're not going to have a, a kind of an intro to it. Oh, okay. So, uh, Randy, let's go put it blunt. You're, you're, you're going to be leaving Kentucky. Yeah, but I'll always have a place of affinity for my old Kentucky home. What can I say? Yeah. So, uh, why don't you let us know uh, how you came to this decision and what do you got? What do you got in front of you? You mean like this Bowman? Or are you talking about the? <laughs> <laughs> are you talking about life life changes? Uh, life changes. You know, I, how I say this nicely? I I think my I could say that my wife's been headhunted. Yeah. You know, and she's got a particular skill set that not everybody in the country has. And so they've been after her for months and it was a friend of hers that she'd worked with before. And, uh, basically she said that, uh, Hey, what would you think about taking a sabbatical? And I said, you mean I don't have to do nothing? I said, sign me up. What? Are, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get, we'll get into the specifics of that a little bit more here in a few minutes, but we do have a guest with us today. And but I understand he's not going to be a guest too much longer, actually. No, actually, we've got uh, Mike Hyatt with us. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me on. So Thanks Mike, for uh, inviting me. Mike, you've been on the show before. I have. We did a uh, a third pour session. and Bl- Blind, yeah. Well, blind, yeah. It was good. So <laughs> see what happens when you do blind pours with friends. The next thing you know, you're a host on the bourbon road. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike, you've agreed to become a... Uh, a host on the show and you've been going out on the road with us here the past few times. And as we've done our interviews, uh, to try and be, uh, Sort of an understudy of Randy's, I guess, more or less. No, come on. Let's, he, he's been a roadie, man. We had to break <laughs> him in. He's doing an internship. Our, our, bur- our bourbon ship, is that what we call it? Mike is, uh, uh, he's no stranger to the microphone now. He's been on a couple of times, been to a few shows. Uh, he's written a couple of blogs for us now. He's very active on social media. I think I'd say that's kind of your strong point, isn't it? Your your writing skills and your and your social skills with people. You're kind of a social butterfly. No, I don't know about all that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think anybody comes and tracks my big big self down and says, Hey, let me go find Big Chief and Well, uh, yeah, but the thing about that is that when you walk in there, everybody knows Big Chief in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so if everybody doesn't know, that's my that's my nickname is Big Chief for for my military background and uh I'm just a, a small little fella. So anyway, so we're making this transition. So this is kind of the show where Randy is um, is kind of saying goodbye to everybody, or so long for a while anyway. For for a while, I'll have I'll be back and forth between Louisville and Virginia quite often until the end of the year. Yeah. So you know, hopefully we can do more of these, but uh, I won't be able to do it every week like I've been doing. So, but uh, you know, Mike is stepping up and taking on the. The microphone is co-host here, and uh, he's got he's got a pretty good skill set. You know, Mike, won't you take a little time here and sort of give somebody a little bit of your background and where you come from and what you do for fun? And if you want to mention your work, that's fine. If not, we all understand. Oh, sure. So uh, my name is Mike Hyatt. I served 24 years in the uh, Coast Guard, retired as a chief out of the Coast Guard, hence the name the big, big Chief. Chief. Part Native American. I like to hunt a lot. What tribe? Outdoor Kickapoo. 
kick what now? I thought that was I a dog. I don't like to kick that stuff. <laughs> but my son brings a dog or something. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. No. That is horrible. Uh, so I uh, got invited to to come interview for a job here in, in Louisville, Kentucky, and we decided we'd take the position back with the U.S. Coast Guard. Uh, I know that's weird have the Coast Guard here in Kentucky, but there is a big old river down there that a, a lot of bourbon comes from. So we decided we would uh, move to Kentucky and fell in love with it here, and we decided to stay. And it's, you it know what? How blessed am I to to get invited by you guys to be a co-host? I just feel really blessed. Uh, hey, Kentucky's a charming place. It'll grab you, buddy. Well, it's great to have you. And you're you're originally from I'm originally from Texas, but uh, we feel right at home here. I, I've never met so so many friendly people before that just just embrace you and take you in your community we have a small farm out here in shelbyville kentucky um and whenever we go out on our back deck you'd almost think you're in in gatlinburg but uh it is kentucky through and through you that kentucky bluegrass down in our bottom um we love it and and when it comes to bourbon uh you've got a respectable collection i was gonna say his collection is about where yours is jim yeah a a whole lot bigger than mine i wouldn't say that i i i I have a nice collection, I think, uh, where it needs to be right now. Um, it's it's not for looking at. If you come over to my house or invited, Jim and I think Randy would both say that uh, you're going to get to open a bottle if it's not open, and we'll we'll drink it. And and I'd say that about both you guys. If you see something there you like, and the bottle's not open, it will be open for you. Yeah. Because if they're if you're coming over and the, and and they don't think they want to share something with you, that bottle ain't going to be out anyway. <laughs> I might, I might have a couple <laughs> bottles hit away just to, uh, you know, for, for special occasions. You know, yeah. I'm hoping to have some grandkids one day. And, you know, when those grandkids are born, I think the bottles, one of the bottles get opened. And, uh, you know, that's that's the kind of special occasions when I think about is grandkids, uh, birthdays, something that means a lot of a, uh, a step in life. Like retirement for me. Retirement for Randy. Yeah, we, did, we brought something for you today. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. So, what did uh, what did you bring for Randy today in 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 honor of his uh, departing town? So, I brought three bourbons with me today. I brought Bowman Brothers Pioneer Spirits, uh, their, their Virginia bourbon. I brought a uh, Yellow Rose Outlaw bourbon from Texas, kind of kind of for me. And then uh, to tie us all three together, I brought some Sam Houston Twelve Year, and I've I've heard it's really good juice. Um, it means twelve years old. It's got to be good, right? Well, we certainly hope so because it's in a beautiful bottle. I can I can tell you that's a that's a sharp looking bottle. And I think it's more about it's not a Texas bourbon. It's actually a Kentucky bourbon. Um, but I think it's more about celebrating the man, uh, Sam Houston, than anything. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got our first bourbon in front of us, and this is the Bowman. Now, now again, what's the proof on this one? Ninety proof. Ninety proof. See, then that's right in my range. You now, know. is it age stated? It isn't. So, you, I mean, it's a straight bourbon. So, so it's at least two. At least two years old, yeah. Uh, the fact that it is not age stated must be means that it's at least four, because otherwise they'd have to put some years and months on there somewhere. We're drinking something that's at least four years old, straight bourbon whiskey. No bash bill, no other information than that, right? Not a whole lot on there. Just uh, just a Virginia distillery. That's what it says. It's right. out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. That's where my daughter went to college at, so it, it can't be bad. What, what school's in Fredericksburg? University of Mary Washington, huh? Little okay. bitty college, um, nice, pretty campus. Been there since the 1700s. Virginia is a very old state. I yeah. mean, really, when you think about when they all joined the statehood and all that, you know, oh, yeah. country and stuff. But. All right, well, let's uh, let's check this thing out. I've had this before. Have you? Yes. And now, did you have the finished one, or did you have just no, no, the no, straight? No, bourbon? I had. It was not the finished. Okay. And and I'm looking forward to this because I remember it. Fondly, I was like, you know, that's Virginia's doing themselves proud. And this is it's really good nose on it. Yeah, it's very floral, a little bit of fruit. It's a nice nose. On the taste, definitely very sweet. Yeah, very sweet whiskey. The finish doesn't last real long, you know, a long time per se, but uh, it does go across the palate pretty smooth. I'm getting kind of a little bit of a nutty flavor to it, right on the mid palate. I was thinking like dried cherries or something. It it is very floral and it 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 tastes it is super sweet. Yeah, I'm getting almonds. You know that that might be. Let me try this again. That might be one of thought I might have gotten because I wanted to say nutmeg, but it wasn't that harsh. It'd be know? honey honey roasted almonds. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll go there because it's very oh, sweet yeah. and you can definitely get 
uh, the toasted oak in it. And it does have that fruity floral uh, note to it. Just that slight, slight peppery taste on the back end, just a little bit, ever so slightly. But really pretty smooth. That's actually a fairly enjoyable pour. Randy, you, you, you're you actually going to have something on the shelf down down the road from you that... I, and I'm not saying I won't have this, yeah. I, but you know... I'll be back and forth to Kentucky. That's all. <laughs> I to say. You're, you're saying you're going to have a bottle of Blanton's on top of that mountaintop. I, I'm not saying, but I have some of my favorites and some stuff that I want to try that I haven't tried that I'll probably take with me. And uh, I'll have them hid back somewhere. And you know, Randy, I'll be thinking a- about you guys when the snow falls <laughs> and I'm sitting there by the little fire. We've had enough of these shows now that our listeners know what you like and they know what you're going to be boxing up to take. They don't know everything. (laughs) They just think they do. You're going to have some of that ancient age, going to have some of that Blanton's, Uh, you know, a little bit of Elmer T. I wish you can't get Elmer T. That's why I have to come over here because he's still, (laughs) you just got to cross the mountain range there and come on over here. Yeah. Hey, it's 64 straight over. I can't complain. Yeah. It's a straight drive and, and pretty drive and, you get into West Virginia and the mountains kind of stir you up a little bit there. and It'll yeah, wake you right up. It sure will. <laughs> so does this Bowman Brothers remind you of anything at all? I don't want to say this because people would think I was crazy, but it went across my mid palate yeah. a lot like that McKenna did. And and the, the oil, the viscosity of it, you know what I'm saying? It just went, and I was like, okay, it, uh, it didn't round the corner as much as some of those hotter ones you guys like. Now, do we know if the Bowman Brothers is a sourced whiskey? It is. It is a sourced whiskey right now. I think they're trying to age their own stuff now. But Yeah. So it is fairly new. Then. It is a pretty new uh, bourbon. What does it remind you of? Kind of a mix between like um, Evan Williams 1783 and Buffalo Trace a little bit. Oh, gotcha. If I mix those two together. Um, very See, similar to it, that. The, it, the taste wasn't McKenna, but I was going, man, the, that almondy yeah. kind of, yeah, the almondy kind of does, but it's it's that front that that front of the palate that reminds me of like a, a, a Buffalo Trace product. Um, but as soon as it hits the mid palate, I get that almond. I start thinking about Heaven Hill. Big Chief, you're already done, man. It must be. Well, good. I didn't give myself a heavy as a pour. I got I got stuff to go home and do today, so I figured I better. Uh, I poured heavy for both of you guys, though, because. Well, that's one- why we're still drinking on it. <laughs> but while while we're drinking and you're not, won't you tell us what you've been drinking lately? I've been drinking a little bit of everything, writing a couple of reviews. Uh, Jefferson Reserves Ocean uh, Voyage? Voyage 19. 19, really? I think that, um, that means. That- 18 or 19? 18, I think. Wow. 18. Weeded, it was a weeded bourbon. Oh, okay. and, uh, it was all right. It wasn't my favorite weeded bourbon. Um, and I, for the price range, you know, I thought it would be a little bit more than it is. Now you it, did that review on Facebook and Instagram. Both. Um, now are you going to put that on the website as a review as well? I will. Uh, I reviewed a couple others, you know, I always stick to that old faithful, you know, I, I, Weller special reserve for me. And, um, I got that rebel yell 10 year, but that's kind of a special bourbon for me. I, I, uh, put that away but wilderness trail which i went with you guys to check it out their wheat is man that that's some good juice right there i love it now your reviews are a little bit different than a typical standard review you kind of just talk plain and simple what you like about it and you don't give like a nose palette finish number rating and all that kind of stuff i guess if you read into it into the into the review it it'll, it's in there it just doesn't. It's not formatted like that, and and I didn't want to format it like that. I mean, you talked about that a little bit. Um, I want every reader or every listener to be able to understand bourbon. You know, I don't want to get in the science of it or anything. I want the average guy that goes into a bourbon store to be like, "Wow, this is what this tastes like." And and everybody, all the reviews online, you read them, and they're all about the same. I want it from a a just a drinker's perspective, a yeah. guy that walks into a liquor store and says, "Hey, I want to grab this." Layman's, this layman's terms, if you Layman, will. Layman. Yeah. Just uh, yeah, I don't need to. I don't. I'm not Doctor Bourbon for sure. No, no, no. And and to me, that's what it's all about because we've we've said since the beginning, it looks like a lot of the people we appeal to are the fringe. You know, when it's not always bourbon curious. Yeah, bourbon curious. And when you have somebody go, hey, 
I'm up here in Michigan. Like I told you that one person, I'm up here in Michigan, you know, and I, I, I tried some stuff in some mixed drinks, but you make me want to try it straight, neat. Yeah. You know, you make me want to, to, to try that and see if I can't pick out some of this stuff and you know, Hey, there, there's a place for that. I, I was talking to my son before I came over here and he lives down in Louisiana. And I said, Hey, have you met anybody that drinks bourbon? He's like, nobody drinks bourbon down here. What? Really? In Louisiana? Is- <laughs> He's in the air force. And, uh, he, uh, he said, I said, well, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll find a couple guys that will end up drinking a little bit. And, uh, They'll, they'll drink. You'll find some bourbon drinkers. Yeah. So they're, they're out there. They're just more concentrated in some areas than others. I mean, they're, they're on every street corner here. So yeah, <laughs> well, we're in, they're following we're, the tr- we're, trucks we're around. In Kentucky. That's right. <laughs> they're following the trucks around from the distillery going, Hey, well, here's my review of Bowman. All right. All right. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Randy, anytime I come to visit you in Virginia and you're pouring Bowman, it's just fine with it's me. It's okay. It's just right, fine with work. me. I think this is high on a mountaintop there. I tell you that. Uh, um, I, if if they're just now getting started, it'd be interesting to see what their age stuff would yeah. be here down the road. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not a knock your socks off bourbon. It's nothing out of this world. It's just a good solid dram. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know where they get it from. I don't know any of the stats on it, the mash bill, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, when it's in my glass, it tastes good. Yeah. And that's that, good. That's it. From, so, from the nose on back. So we know there's one bourbon over there. And also that Catoctin Creek, I think, is from over there as well, right? I haven't. I don't know I how you know pronounce about that. It. There's another one over there as well. But uh, You know, I don't know a whole lot about Virginia. I used to visit there as a kid, Winchester area. I had a stepfather in the Air Force, and uh, that's where his home was. And he'd gone to uh, school with Patsy Klein. What was her actual name? I forgot. I don't know. Now, you know how these how it goes, but he had gone to school with her. So, you, you know, all the way from Washington State or Alaska or North Dakota, wherever we were traveling from, it was Patsy Klein that you heard on. <laughs> He'd be playing her for a, a bunch. There's but, a lot to, lot to see in Virginia. And I think over the next 10 years, I bet you you'll see more uh, bourbon distilleries pop up um, here and there. Um, well, you know, after that, in, that uh, conversation with Chris. Morris over there at Woodford. Woodford, but right. That, that whole Mount Vernon and, and Washington stuff, um, I'm definitely going to be going to Mount Washington, I mean, to, to, to Vernon. So anybody who is Mount listening Vernon. now that didn't catch that episode, I don't remember the episode number. It's a few back from this one, but um, we interviewed Elizabeth McCall and Chris Morris over at Woodford Reserve, and they gave us sort of the rundown the story on making whiskey at George Washington's Mount Vernon home. So I guess George Washington was the largest distiller in America at one time. At one time, yeah. And uh, it's not a well-known or widely known fact because they don't put it in the textbooks. So it just didn't survive the ages. Right. But it's a fact. And, you know, and they unearthed all that. The archaeologists pulled it all out. And then they got everything running again. And they're making whiskey over there. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to go and watch the process and taste do a little tasting and, you know, see what it's all about. So when we come to visit in Virginia, we'll probably scoot away for a day or so and go that, visit hey, the, that, uh, that would work. That would be Vernon fine. Distillery. That'd be fine. Well, that's, that's a drive. Right that's there. a big drive. Oh, yeah. Well guys, thumbs up on this one. Uh, what do we have next? I think next we're going to go to that Texas bourbon, uh, 100% corn. That's a, mm. that's a new one for us, right? That's going to be all interesting. Right. Looking forward to it's, it. It's called Outlaw Bourbon for a reason. They're breaking all yellow, those rules. Yellow Rose. Yellow all right. Rose Let's Texas. pour it. Da, 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 da. All right. So lightning fast, like Mike, you just poured us the next bourbon. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So it's the Yellow Rose from uh, from Texas. It's an outlaw bourbon. They said 100% corn. Da, 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 Ninety. Da, 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 oh, yeah. Da, 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 it's like the Lone Ranger over there. <laughs> I must be Tonto. No. Hey, the Yellow Rose of Texas is a great song, man. Just saying. 90, 93 proof. 93 proof. So this is uh, a corn whiskey, but it's also bourbon. 100% corn. Okay. So we know that bourbon has to be at least 51% corn. So having 100% is more than 51. So it, it qualifies there. So why do they say that it breaks the laws of bourbon? I'm not sure. They just state it in their their website and on the bottle. It even says that. And it just sounds positive. good because they're outlaws, right? Maybe it's because from Houston down there. It's that's that's pretty hot down there. Yeah, doesn't get real cold down there. I'd say 46, and you know if it's 46 down there. Now, what was the proof on this again? 93 proof. So 93 proof. It is a bourbon whiskey according to the label, but it's not straight, so it's less than two years old. 
my guess. Yeah, I'd say that. If you're reading from the label and trying to make a determination based on that. So we're drinking a 100% corn liquor bourbon whiskey that is less than two years old, made in Texas. But, you know, in Texas, two years is a long time in a barrel that heat there, there's going to be some the angels will be happy let's just say that <laughs> I, I would say so down there all right let's try it well there's white dog yeah i'm definitely getting I, i'm definitely getting ethanol and corn on the nose i was gonna say it's it's pretty young i'm saying burnt caramel yeah but, but it is caramely there is a little bit of a fruit a little bit of a fruity note on the front i'm surprised to get that from the corn but it's probably coming from the barrel but you'd expect it to be sweet with corn you know Oh yeah, that's um, that's like eating candy, candy corn. There you candy go, candy corn, candy corn. I don't, I don't think it's uh, quite as sweet as that Bowman. To really, me. It, it's sweet. But you know, for as young as it is, I was expecting it to be a little. It's actually not bad, man. I like this. You feel that pepper on the back uh-huh. end a little bit? Yep. Yellow rose. I might it's have a little, to date her. It's a, <laughs> it's a little buttery too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really surprised. That's pretty good bourbon. I I don't mind it so much. I drink it. It's still a little bright, you know. Yeah. So you know, it's it's a little bit. It's young. It's a little but young, but I, man, I would not say honestly. I would not say this was under two years old. I haven't been surprised like this since that. Uh, since you cheated? No, that six months. <laughs> no, that six. What, what did we have that was six months? OCD. OCD number five. Yeah, yeah. I, I did, huh. it, for six months. It kind of surprised me. Maybe it's maybe it's the one hundred percent corn. I'm not sure. Well, usually you get kind of a, you know, the, the barley is usually necessary in the fermentation process to get those enzymes that are needed. But so I guess they can add those enzymes as well. Not to get too technical here, but 100% corn. I mean, there's no rye, there's no barley in there. But this has got a little bit of pepper on the back end, doesn't it? It, it does. It, a little bit of that black pepper. Um, this wouldn't be at the top of my list, but um, I'm glad I tried it. Well, I think if, it's, if uh, I went to Texas and this was all that was available, I'd say hook me up with some yellow roach. As know? they say in Texas, this is fair to Midland. Yep. Fair to Midland. <laughs> but I wonder if it's... it's Do they it say is, that in Texas? I don't think so. Is that is that a Kentucky? They though? say Lukenbach, Texas a lot. Though. Do they? That's, I'm from Hill, Hill Country, and that's Lukenbach, Texas. Is uh, I'm sure both of you heard that song before. Yeah. 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 Randy's it's, probably sang it once or twice it's, in his life. It seems like I have heard that song before. <laughs> No, I, th- I think, uh, you know, I started going to look for these these three bourbons um, where I was wanting to bring three bourbons. And I said, well, Randy's going to Virginia, so I'm going to get a Virginia bourbon. It wasn't too hard to find that. So then I go to look for um, a Texas bourbon. Now, that was a little bit harder to find than I thought so it would that, be. So that, you know, Randy's going out, the, going, going on down the road, and he's going to Virginia. You're coming in the door. You're not really coming from Texas, but you're originally from there. Originally from Texas. I've been there in 20, 28 years now. Okay. So, so what we'll, we'll say is that the bourbon road is about to fork. We're going to come to a fork in the road. Yeah. Virginia goes one way. We got this here, and then Texas is headed. He's a Cowboys join, fan, though. Join, oh, oh is he? man. Here we go. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> hey, they laid it out last night. They laid it out. So whenever I went shopping for this, um, I went to three or four different stores and said, hey, I need a Virginia, or Virginia bourbon. Well, I need where a, did you find Texas this, bourbon. actually? Well, I went over our friends over at Westport Whiskey and Wine. and Oh, really? Okay. We talked about three different bourbons they had there from Texas, and this is what they recommended. And I, I'm huh. glad that they could uh, they could give me something that would honor my, my uh, state. So, so what's the story about the Yellow Rose there? Well, my wife, she was an Air Force brat like you. She was born in Texas, and I... Uh, She's a uh, half German and and half Spanish, and uh, when she was born, her she got named uh, Vivian Rose, and she was kind of a little yellow. She's you know she's half Spanish, so she has a darker complex. So sometimes she gets called the Yellow Rose. Whenever it's her uh, birthday, I buy her Yellow Roses. So that, to me, that's kind of special, you know, a special yeah. bourbon. Oh, hey, that's a great little story. I mean, yeah. pass me in the Kleenex. <laughs> I mean, this, this is getting <laughs> sentimental here, Mike, buddy. Mike Soft Side, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got a heart after all, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I think this would be good in? This would make a great Kentucky mule. Maybe we should call it a Texas mule. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I was thinking it would make a great cocktail. Yeah, no matter I think what. It would. Yeah, no. 
I, I think it would stand either. out in a cocktail. Quite, uh, quite surprising with the, the pepper to me that being 100% corn. Maybe we'll, uh, I don't have the stuff to make a mule, but maybe we'll, uh, when we're done recording the show today, maybe we'll make an old fashioned with it and see what it tastes like. So Randy, what are you, what what are you going to be doing in the meantime? What are you, are you just going to set up on that mountain and look pretty or? I, the reason I agreed to all of this is because my wife told me that after all these years of pushing so hard, I get to take about a six month sabbatical. So that means I get to sit up there on that mountaintop and contemplate life and what I might want to do in the future for about six months. So that's, that's doctor speak for doing nothing. Well, no, I, 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 Hey, it's if great. You got a place. If you have to pick a place, folks, I tell you, if you have to pick a place to sit and, and do nothing and, and just enjoy life a little bit and sit back, Randy, did you ever pick a place? Cause it is beautiful up there in the blue. blue I, I uh, remember going through the Shenandoah Valley as a kid and going, man, this is a beautiful place. And, and Camp Blue Ridge is probably, I want to say less than five miles from the Blue Ridge Parkway. It's uh, not far from the Appalachian Trail. In fact, uh, I think for the last summer camp, they took some of the staff and actually hiked part of the Appalachian Trail for a couple of days, just for an outing for the staff. And uh, we went up there and Julie got to go horseback riding. I got to take the four-wheeler out and I was like, you know what? (laughs) With three waterfalls on property and 650 acres, and uh, some of the stuff I said, I can just see me setting a chair out here. And taking a cup of coffee in the morning, maybe a glass of bourbon in the evening, and, and watching the sunrise and sunset for a little while. There you go. So your horses um, are going to become, uh, they're going to work there. Yeah. yeah. They've, they've been camp horses before, you know, so they'll they'll get back in the routine of doing that kind of thing. And, and the uh, dogs are just going to live the good life. The, the coon hounds, we're going to have to figure that <laughs> figure that one out. And we may have to get GPS collars because uh, I think they may get on something and we'll hear some howling on the mountainside, you know. But, but let's be let's be realistic about this. I know you've been talking about writing a book. I know you've been working on an album and you've got at least one song done. And Oh, I've got several, several done. songs. And, done. and okay. actually we, I talked to Bo Garrett last week, you know, yeah. he's, he plays guitar with Montgomery Gentry. And I said, Bo, man, I got a lick in my head. I need somebody to play this for me. And he said, Hey, I got a little studio at the house, come to the house. And, and, and I, I said, the, the song's called Blondes and Bourbon. How appropriate <laughs> <laughs> for, for you know, that kind of thing there. And uh, he said, come on, let's do it. And I said, sounds good to me. You know, he's got his own project going on and stuff. But, you know, some I'll have time to do some collaboration kind of things. So. Well, when you, when you start releasing a little bit, you'll let us know so that we can put some links out so some of our listeners can uh, pop in from time to time and check in on you. Well, like I told Julie when uh, we were talking about all this, I said it's going to be rough at first, girl, because Daddy Rabbit's been out of the business for a little while, so... <laughs> It's going to it's going to sound like screaming monkeys to start <laughs> start off with but oh, you know well between Bo and your friends down at Confederate Railroad I think you've got a lot of uh, a lot of pals you know, out there and I want to do that and I'll have time to do that so hey say I come back to Louisville and we do a show here head down to uh, Gadsden Alabama where you know Mo who plays bass with Confederate Railroad uh, is and well actually Rusty's down there too the guitar player he used to play with Sammy Kershaw before he joined railroad, uh, head to Georgia. When I see my mom, I'm Joey's just down the road, you know, Joey's playing keyboards with him now. So, um, yeah, you know, see if I can't get these guys to do, do some recording, you know, Hey, what better, what better folks can you get, you know, to play on some stuff. So, you know, but September is, man, it's smashed full so, of stuff. So no bourbon beyond for you. I would, you know what? And that's that's the way my life's gone, though, Jim. Yeah. Here's the deal. I've lived in Hawaii and Florida, but I don't get certified scuba until <laughs> I come to Kentucky <laughs> and go to a to a freaking you know to a, some kind of mine that's filled in. You know, yeah, somewhere down quarry. There. Yeah, some co- rock well, quarry. You get, and, you get you get done. What's important? We know you got a lot going on this month, and I'm I'm glad we were able to do this transition early. Uh, to sort of take a little bit of load off you. You know, I appreciate, I appreciate that because it's, it's booked up. You know, you got, when you have horses, you know, you know how the bourbon culture is and yep. the horse, all the horse people. And you got, you got to think about them and, and the animals that you do have and making those transitions and stuff. So I appreciate you letting me do that there. But 
I'll have to come back. I'll just, you know, I'll have some time. Yep. And I can come back and hang out with you guys and we'll go to bourbon and beyond, you know, and actually, uh, actually have some fun with, it, you know, I, thought, I think long. bourbon and beyond is only going to get bigger. So, it- I, and, and you know, I, I agree because when I first moved here, uh, let's see, Julie and I married in 2012. So I started living here or, you know, around these parts here, Shelbyville actually is where we, where we used to live in 2012 and to see where it's come in the last seven years. Oh my goodness. You know, it's like, uh, where the whole bourbon cult, this, this whole boom has come from in seven years has been amazing. It's just blowing up. I think I, since, since we've been here for three years and I, I'm just amazed at the new distilleries that are popping up, the, and new, they're and they're new good, shops. man. When you look at Peerless and Wilderness Trail and R- New Riff and and some of the stuff coming up, um, you know, you know, I don't know that I've ever had any rabbit hole, and I think I'm going to have some rabbit hole before I leave. You know, just some 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 new craft stuff that's even coming up. You know, and uh, make sure geez. you load up your 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 traveling box when you leave with a, a few good ones, especially <sighs> the Kentucky only stuff. You know, yeah, well, and not craft, yeah, straight regular stuff. JTS Brown. And, yep. <laughs> you can hear JTS Brown. Man, you're killing me. I was going to say Old Foresters because you know you can buy, but you know what? buy some out there. Sitting around the fire last night, we sat around our little fire pit because, you know, we finally got a like a fall day in August. Can you imagine? Right. Oh, what a beautiful day. <laughs> it was awesome. Was. Awesome. And, uh, you know, that's uh, to me part of the bourbon culture sitting around that fire pit with a little music going and that's it. So you've got to talk to one another. And uh, you find out things about each other that you didn't know before. And, you know, Old Forester is what we were drinking last yeah, night. Good deal. You know, not, a, so, not a bad bottle to have around the fire. I was going to say that's a solid every time, you know. Um, so... Thank Tommy and Gwen Mitchell from Logheads Home Center for supporting this episode of The Bourbon Road. Logheads Home Center, nestled in the hills of Kentucky, is an industry leader in building handcrafted rustic furniture. Family owned and operated, they take pride in offering only the very best for their customers. The Logheads, and that's what they like to call themselves, are skilled woodcrafters who are passionate about creating rustic furniture for people who appreciate the beauty of natural wood. Owners Tommy and Gwen don't just sell the rustic lifestyle, they live it. And you can be sure that Logheads Furniture will always be handcrafted in Kentucky by artisans who embrace the simple way of life. Logheads Rustic Furniture is made from northern white cedar, a sustainable wood that's naturally rot and termite resistant. Its beauty and quality will add warmth to your earthy lifestyle for generations to come. Be sure to check out everything they have to offer at logheadshomecenter.com. And while you're at it, Give Tommy and Gwen a shout on Facebook or Instagram at Logheads Home Center. Well, we also have something coming up the weekend of the 6th of September, the 6th through the 8th. It's the uh, Kentucky State Barbecue Festival. And it's going to be at the Wilderness Trail Distillery in Danville, Kentucky. Man, I wish I could go with you, dude, Mike. <laughs> I wish I could go with you, Big Chief, down there to hang out with Shane, Shane and, and Pat down there. And who all else. So well, Shane and Pat has invited us to come down and be the uh, the podcast uh, of the barbecue festival. You know, no pressure, Mike. No, no pressure, no Mike. Pressure. <laughs> all no, by myself. No pressure. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, oh, just man. to s- sit back in that house again oh, and just walk around on the grounds as like as a guest is to me is is amazing. You know. So I like your plan. You're going to set up to record in the house, and you're also going to walk around and talk to some people as well. I think and walk uh, around and you know hopefully some of our listeners are out there. Yeah. Um, you know you see me walking around. I'm I'm quite easy to spot walking around out there. You did um, get him a Bourbon Road shirt, right? <laughs> well, it it will be in, but unfortunately his shirts won't be in until the 13th of September, which you is the why. week after. You know why? Well, oh man! <laughs> oh, don't do it! <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> you, am I going to go there? A special order, it's extra a special material. Special order is going to have to be big, man. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm, I'm looking forward to going out there and just walking around, and talk to listeners, and then maybe have some special guests come in that inside the house there and sit down with me. And supposedly there's gonna be some big names in bourbon there, and well, some big not, names in barbecue too. Barbecue, yeah, oh, yeah, that's the thing. And and so. these folks, 
I had a I had a brother that was on a barbecue cooking team that used to go to Memphis and compete. You know, Memphis the, in May. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the big daddy. Yeah, out there. I'm telling you, you know what I'm talking about. Then. Oh, yeah. And well, they're serious about that stuff, folks. Yeah. You know and Mike, you're a pretty, you're a pretty serious barbecue guy yourself, right? I, I, I would say I dabble. You're in not it. a competition guy. <laughs> I'm not a competition guy. I'm a, I'm a eating barbecue kind of guy. Yeah. But I, I'm a, I think I make pretty good barbecue, and um, you well, know, that's not what I'm after. What I'm after is I understand that you've uh, done some pretty good job with some venison sausage. Man. I do that too. I, uh, I like to hunt a little bit for in the outdoors and, and I, I prefer to do my own uh, processing and I like to make my own jalapeno summer sausage, which, which I, both of you gentlemen have. Got a little uh, bit upstairs. Yeah. 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 And, and so you can hook me up before I leave, right? <laughs> I, I actually, I have some for you. Oh, are you kidding me? I just Get did. Out of here. I just did 22 pounds of it the other day and I smoked it up and it's oh. in the refrigerator right now. Uh, finishing up and I'll package it up and I'll make sure you go to Virginia with some. Now I really am shedding a tear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, we hope that um, anybody who's listening to this podcast, if they're uh, thinking, looking for something to do that weekend, the weekend of the 6th through the uh, uh, it's Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I think I'm going to be out there on the the morning of the 8th. Uh, Friday, they, they have some private events going on on Saturdays, the, the big day out there. And that's the day I'll be out there. I'll probably be out there from uh, nine o'clock until, until about four. If you want to try to catch me out there, um, I'll be either be in the house for a couple hours or I'll be around the grounds. And like I said, you, you won't miss me for sure. Well, and here's the deal. I, you know, the wife goes to sign the paperwork this week. And depending on what the schedule looks like, if I can break away for that day, I'll, I'll come hang out with you, with there your big chief. Hey, I love that. Uh, if it, if it's just that one day, maybe I can I can break away for that one day, and then we'll see what we can do. About yeah, I think it. to be out there and and even to be a guest of uh, Pat and Shane's out there on their grounds. Oh yeah, um, folks, if you haven't been out there to Wilderness Trail, you definitely need to go out to Danville, folks. Keep your eyes on these guys. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, they, th- from what I'm tasting and from what they're doing and they're just really getting cranking, you know, we'll get, I want to see where these guys are in five years. Maybe, you know what I mean? It's just going to be to me amazing, but I'm going to drink their stuff the whole five years. Up to I, that. I, I'm not saying you don't <laughs> because uh, they're, and you know me and most of you guys, have, most of the people who have listened to this show know that when I first hooked up with Jim, I wasn't a rye guy. I didn't care for rye. And between the Carters and then that wilderness trail, oh, their rye is just off the chain. Settlers it, rye. Yeah. yeah. It's good stuff. And, um, man, I want to see where they're going to be. I, I think they're going to go a long ways in, in the Berman community. Yeah. And um, it's good for good for Kentucky, too. You know, yeah. it's, it's good for tourism. And it's- well, you know, I was sitting there thinking when I was awake at 2 o'clock this morning, how supportive – all the master distillers are in the state of Kentucky of each other. Oh yeah. You know, if something, if somebody goes down and they need something, Hey, look, we'll, we'll house some stuff. We'll do some stuff for you. And and they don't tear each other's product down. They lift each other up. And that's one part of the bourbon culture that I really love. It's a, it's a team effort really. And it's at the end of the day, and it's, a, it's pretty awesome to, to be yeah. a part of. I think that's what drew me and my wife to, to Kentucky was the generosity here uh, and, and everybody. And, you know, Pat and, Pat and Shane and the rest of the master distillers, they, they live that, that lifestyle. They live that as their, as their, yeah, their creed, I guess it was what you would call it. Right. Well, when you hear stories like Bo told us last week of, of, you know, Jimmy Russell and Fred, no, actually they, they know each other. They know the product, you know, they're always keeping up with what's going on with the other guy because, you know, hey, it's it's a friendly competition. Sure. But at the end of the day, we're all in it for the same. What, what was your your quote, Jim? I love that that quote. Did you, uh, you, rising tide raises all ships. But that's not tide. mine. That's been around for I, I understand, a very long but time. But I hadn't heard it until. thousand years probably. Yeah, a uh, thousand years. But. I understand, but I hadn't heard it until you guys. And so, you know, rising tide raises all ships. And, uh, hey, I love that about the bourbon culture. You know what? One of the things I like about the culture and i also like about our show the sharing of the bourbon it, it's the same thing that happens when you share a meal uh, you know it's just that camaraderie that comes together it kind of levels the playing field a little bit uh people just tend to um become closer during yeah. those times uh, and i don't think it matters whether or not they're um 
friends or competitors in business that the same thing happens. You know, you sit on a couch next to a guy, you enjoy a glass of his bourbon, even though you might be a bourbon maker, you gain a lot of respect for him. You're, you're, you're sharing common ground. You're sharing conversation. You know, you're focusing on the product and the flavor of it, and you're appreciating what he has done. And next week when he's over at your place, he's doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're not going to stand up in a room and say, I like this guy's better than this guy's. These guys aren't going to tell you that, Hey, I, I drink this guy's and I like it the best. They're not going to do that. They drink everybody's. Yeah. You know, they, you know, they're, they're drinking well, their own well, stuff. But the thing is, is you, you can use it. Um, the same analogy as a musician. If I want to know where my music fits and what little niche that I have in my music, I listen to everybody's music. Yeah. You know, you just do that kind of thing. And so. You have a great, you got a great appreciation for what they oh, do. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Well, I think I'm ready to move on to bourbon number three. What do you think? Hey. Let's do it. All right. Oh, let's this do is it. the twelve year stuff here. So for our third pour, um, we got a Sam Houston twelve year. Uh, it's a Kentucky straight bourbon, ninety eight proof. Where is it distilled? Does it say? It says it's distilled in Barstown, Kentucky. Wow. So, okay. so what's the age on this bourbon? 12 years, 11 months. Are 12 you kidding me? Wow. So this was distilled in uh, April of 2006. Wow. Man. Okay. So it didn't matter where they got the juice. This sector has been sitting around for a while. So, so who bottles this whiskey and where? It's bottled by Three St- <clears throat> Three Springs Bottling Company down in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah, okay. familiar with Three for, Springs. For Western Spirits. Got it. Okay. So is there a mash bill on this? 74% corn, 18% rye, and then 8% malted barley. This should be right up your road, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it sounds a little familiar, but um, we'll let our we'll let our listeners decipher that. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, you know, the, when I smell it, there's, a, there's something familiar about it. This is something I have tasted so, before. Number four char barreled. Yeah. Which if uh, our listeners don't know what the number four char is, that's about 55 seconds okay. on that char. So this is a, this is a sourced bourbon out of um, Bardstown and uh, it's a 12 year old stock. It is, uh, it's pr- proof down to 90 proof. You said 90, 98, 98 proof. Okay. Okay. So, so in my range, definitely where I would like it. So, so I, I don't guess I understand why Sam Houston. So this is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey and, but it's named Sam Houston. So to tie our three bourbons in today, I, you know, I had this up on a shelf and I, I'd looked for this bourbon and looked for it and looked for it. And it was why? a bottle that I wanted because Sam Houston, he's just a, a guy I respect. I respect the hell out why? of that guy. Why? <laughs> Well, Randy, so you're going to Virginia. Well, Sam Houston was born in, in the mountains of Virginia, right oh, there in wow. Lexington, okay. Virginia, where you're you're moving to. Um, he uh, went to Tennessee. He was a governor of Tennessee. He was a state senator in Tennessee. And then he said, well, you know what? I'm going to go down to this place called Tejas. And uh, a lot of Americans were coming down there to to start a new life and stuff and being getting these land grants from Mexico and they, they didn't like how they were being taxed. So they started up their little revolutions. Um, and Sam Houston was a big part of that. Um, I, I know a lot of people have heard the story of the Alamo and how they fought. And he kind of took revenge on, on the Mexican army. Yeah. Uh, yeah he ran Santa Ana out of, out of that particular territory. He put a dress on, he found him in a dress hiding. Um, what he did. Now, hold it. Back, back the train up back now. Back the train up. What? So, uh, Santa Ana, he, they attacked him on a, on, in a morning. Santa Ana went and hid in a back of a wagon and dressed up like an old lady um, so he could hide. This and is the back guy that had 5,000 troops on 120 at the at the Alamo. He did. And, and then he went and got in an how, dress. How much time it transpired between these two events? I think know? it was a couple months. Um I don't know the exact time frame. I'd have to look it up, but they, uh, man, that's how I've had Texas history too. And it's been a while though, but, uh, Sam Houston, he, he wanted to revenge and he wanted to make sure that Texas won its independence. And then eventually Texas became a state. Uh, he was the first president of the Texas Republic. And then, uh, he, I think he became the sixth governor of, uh, Texas, and then he became a uh, Texas state senator for for you the uh, Senate. So he uh, he's a hell of a man. So you brought all three burdens today. And the first one you bought in honor of Randy going to Virginia, you brought the Bowman Brothers, uh, which is a Virginia whiskey, a bourbon whiskey. And then uh, you brought 
uh, the Yellow Rose of Texas, which is a Texas whiskey, which represents you coming in and from your wife. Texas and your wife. And then to kind of tie it all together, you brought the Sam Houston, which is a Kentucky. What is it? Let's get this right. This is a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Named after a guy who was, was born in Virginia, born in Virginia, but made his fame in Texas. Exactly, made his fame. In, I think he was already a, a pretty f- famous politician. Oh, probably was. The, yeah, at that time in life. Yeah, uh, and and for those days, the, the man lived to be seventy years old. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good old age at that that time that in time. life. Well, right? I don't know. They say Daniel lived to what 83, 80 in, in oh, Missouri yeah. when he when he passed finally. But uh, yeah. Yeah, for those days, some tough well, old birds. Well, That's I have to say, saying. Mike, job well done putting this together. What a yeah. great uh, tribute uh, trio of bottles. How there. apropos? Yeah. Hey, I I think uh, respect the hell out of you guys in this in this podcast. I, I was just honored to come on here, and I wanted to do it justice and say, hey, um, I brought three bottles of bourbon that anybody you can go and p- purchase any of these, in almost every liquor store you might f- be hard pressed to find the Sam Houston, but you can find it. Um, huh. Well, let's let's. Uh, well, here's let's, cheers. Let's here's to you, cheers. Sam Houston. Oh, that is a bold whiskey. That is, um, it is very thick. It's very um, caramel oak rich. There's yep. definitely um, some dark notes to it, and it and it doesn't shoot straight across the palate. It rounds the corner, as I say. It and and the finish isn't bad man that that lasts for a little bit but i'm getting some i'm getting definitely getting like a warehouse must kind of age to it yeah you know the older oak kind of warehousey kind of okay. flavor uh, this has bothered me for a while you guys don't mind if i just like bring this up i i've been hearing the last few podcasts about this oak taste and, and i'm not getting this oak what, what am i missing that i'm not getting the oak everybody talks about well do you do you drink wine do I drink wine? Yes. On occasion, yeah. So do you drink any bold like Cabernet Sauvignons? Anything I, I like Cabernets, actually. So you get that that kind of tannin, kind of oaky tannin flavor on the bold does aged that, wine. I mean, does the, that equate to, to a little bit of bitterness? Not quite. Well, but. I mean it can. It can it can lead to a little bit of dryness on the back of the palate. It can definitely give you that kind of um um I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Um um, tannins kind of dry out the tongue a little bit. Okay. Um, I, I, guess. I, I Randy, I've always been this kind of same like you when I'm drinking a bourbon. I, I don't always get that oaky taste to it, but when I drink a red wine, a, a really deep, rich, dark red wine, I'll get that oaky taste. I know that that thing's been an oak barrel and I can taste just a, a little bit in this right here. Um, maybe because it's been sitting in, in the barrel so long, but, um, Sometimes I have to wonder what I drink a bourbon that somebody else says, oh, this is oaky. And I'm like, hmm. Oh, I, I get that I, leather taste because it's been sitting around the warehouse. And I'm sitting yeah. there going, geez, I feel like I'm, I'm in Hawaii again. And that that wave just well, went over think, top of I my think head. It, I'm I think what typically, struggling at the bottom. I think know? what typically happens with the the older aged bourbons is you get a little bit more of that, that later oak influence. It shows up on the back of the palate. It shows up as... Uh, Sometimes leather, tobacco. Um, okay, tobacco. I can kind to. of a uh, um, so you know that dry taste. That you get dry at the very taste. End. That that you know the 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 lubrication on your tongue kind of goes away and it becomes kind of uh, um, it sticks to the roof of your mouth a little bit. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I don't know how to explain it. That's yeah. kind of the best I can do. But at least you guys give me a direction. You know, hey, we're not a bunch of science guys here. We're just no, guys drinking some bourbon, right? And everybody knows that my sniffer is not. The greatest, you know, I've got a deviated septum. I've had problems breathing all my entire life, you know, and that I don't quite catch the nose. Well, there's plenty like of guys out else. here doing doing bourbon reviews. And although we we like to talk about the bourbons we're drinking, uh, we're not necessarily dissecting them like a wine sommelier. Um, there's plenty of people out there that do a perfectly fine job of that. And uh, I guess we're just not right there. We're not there yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it will ever be there. I, I don't. I don't want to be that guy that talks like that. I want to be a guy that sits down and drinks some bourbon. And I think both of you guys are the same way. We just like to enjoy our bourbon. And, um, you know, hey, well, that's a good bottle of bourbon. Yeah, it's really well, good. And long. you know what? I think Bo said it best last week. He said, it's not how much bourbon you drink. It's how you drink your bourbon. And I was sitting there going, okay, he's he's in the groove. 
that's where, that's where I'm at. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little to get the taste. Now, what am I tasting? Now, let me dig a little bit deeper, you know, and, uh, geez, you know, this, this shows basically has taught me that, you know, let, let's dig a little deeper. What am I actually getting? Well, let's, here? let's take a note from what, uh, what Bo said last week and, you know, the kind of the, a little bit of advice that Jimmy gave him. He said, you know, when I talk about bourbon, I just like to speak paint plainly. Yeah. You know, so the people understand what I'm saying. So if you're speaking plainly um, about this bourbon, Randy, the Sam Houston bourbon, what would you say about it? I, oh, I like it. You know, that's, that's plain. <laughs> that's pretty plain. You don't give uh, a- no. And, and, you know, um, because it, it's smooth and you guys know that's, it's right in my range of, of heat. And so when I took it on the front end, I'm sitting there going, okay, what am I getting? You know, you always get the, the caramels and vanillas. You always get that kind of stuff there. And I go, okay, it's something a little different, a little bit darker. So am I getting a dark fruit on the front end? What am I getting? You know? And then, and, and then the next thing is, is I talk about rounding the corner. So sometimes some, uh, the mid palate, it'll shoot straight across, you know what I mean? And you get to the finish. This didn't do that. It took a little bit and it rounded the corner just a tad. And the finish though, it, it sticks around, but it's not peppery. Does that make sense? I don't know. Makes sense. It, total sense. And, and uh, I'm sitting there going, dang, this is pretty smooth. Um, I, I, They definitely did Sam Houston justice here with a, Respecting him and picked out a good bourbon. For I, 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 if I was in Texas and this is what I was offered, we'd drink it up. You know, <laughs> we definitely would drink this. So if I was speaking speaking plainly about this, and I'll give you the same chance when I'm finished here, Mike. If I was speaking plainly about the Sam Houston bourbon, I would say that this is a well aged bourbon. It's um, it's a good sip and whiskey. Yeah. It's got a it's got a boldness to it. And yeah, bold, it, that's a good and, word. And yeah. you know, it when when you take that first nose and that first sip of it, it is absolutely present in the moment. It gives you everything it's got in that first sip, and then it sticks around long after you've swallowed, and it makes you want to reach for that glass again. Yeah. Man, I tell you this, I this winter I'll be sitting by my fireplace. And I would say that would be one of the bottles I reach for to sit there, like you said, a, a good sip and whiskey with my old dog Woodrow and just sit there and sit on what the is, stove. What does a bottle of this run? I want to say this was right around 130 to 150. Um, Similar to old Carter then, basically. Yeah. And, and, some, uh, and you know what? It reminds me a little bit of an old Carter bourbon. I, you know, I can get that. I get that. They're different in their own ways. But this reminds me of it a little bit. I, I would recommend if you see a bottle of it, uh, you know, for our listeners, if you see a bottle of it and and that's in your price range to go out there and get it, um, not chase it. But um, if you see it, it's well worth picking up. And I think, like you said, Jim, uh, to me, it, I'd call that my fireplace whiskey right there. No, yeah. I, I, and I get that. You know, my fireplace whiskey is a little different. I, I'm looking for. The whole hot toddy with the honey and the lemon kind of stuff. So, I'm, you know, you know, a lot of times we try to avoid talking too much about price because we all know that price is relative. It's to relative yeah. to where you are in life and where you are in your earning and and you know your disposable income, and you know value is in the eye of the beholder. And honestly, uh, I can't tell you whether or not you want to drop $130 on this bottle or not. That's not fair of me to ask it because <laughs> I don't know what you have to do to earn $130. Right. That's true. And I, you know, you asked me earlier, said, Hey, what, what are you drinking lately? And I've got everything from a $20 bottle to all the way up a little bit more pricier than the Sam Houston. And I'll reach for anything. I'm in that, that part of my life right now where I, I can do that. But I'd just as soon drink a $20 bottle as I would a $200 bottle. It, to me, it doesn't matter on the price. It's the juice in that inside that bottle that matters to me um, and how it tastes and how it's going to drink. And for listeners out there, I, I drink my bourbon neat. I don't put water in it. I don't put ice in it. That's just how I like it. Um, I don't care if it's 200 degrees out that day or if it's 36 degrees. That's just me, and I like it like that. Well, and you know what our motto is here at the Bourbon Road, your bourbon 
your way. <laughs> so if you're out there looking at the shelves, guys, and you see a bottle of Sam Houston up on the shelf, and the price tag that they've got on that bottle is not something that drives you away personally, I would say buy it because it's a delicious pour. It's I, very good. I, I am pleasantly surprised, and it's something I would reach for again. I think that's a fair way to talk about it. What do you oh, think? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, man, that's some good bourbon. Yeah. So we're going to keep drinking on this. Um, I I want to say again, Randy, you know, we it's been such a pleasure to work with you on, on the Bourbon Road, and you're one of the original founders. And, uh, you know, we've had some great times recording this show. We've really enjoyed ourselves. It's been a lot of work. But it's been a labor of love. Uh, a lot of fun. And, Meet a uh, lot of great people. Yep, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Mike, it's 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 great to welcome you on board. I'm so happy to have you. And uh, I think, you know, we're going to take this thing further on down the road and see where it goes. Hey, man, it's a, it's a journey I'm, I'm looking forward to. And, you know, when I first started listening to your guys' podcast, I – you know, I was mowing my grass or driving to work and I'm listening to it. And I said, like, man, these are these are two guys I can listen to and just sit down and kind of relax. And, um, you know, you make that time go by faster when you're listening to a podcast. Is that that's what you're trying to do, I think. But rather than just making that time go by, it's, it's enjoyable. And then you look forward to that next podcast. You're like, man, I can't wait till Wednesday. And, and the Bourbon Road comes out with a new episode. And I hope that that's still it is that we're still wanting to be listened to uh, you know i hope randy it's like man when is mike and jim gonna cut that new episode uh, I, and i'm gonna have time to do that now so <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like that sam houston let me let me reach for another you know that second class let me oh, yeah. let me listen to that again and and if i oh. could say anything to you guys here one of the things that makes this podcast different is the stories yeah keep reaching for these people's stories because everybody has a story and you're doing something that 95% of the other podcasts out there aren't doing is, is get the person's story and they do a great job. And I love the bourbon culture. And, you know, I, I was sitting there thinking to myself, if somebody asked me what the bourbon culture was to me, I could go on for 20 minutes Yeah, because oh, yeah. it's the food, it's the music, it's the people, it's everything from just mother nature working on that juice, you know? to 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 bourbon geeks you know and to, to friends of ours you know with with you know mash and drum and and the bourbon journey and and dan's dusty reviews you know yeah the old dusty dan doing his reviews you know it's that and then it's you know virginia with her cakes it's Bo playing with montgomery gentry it's it's chef chef d over here you know at the, down, old, stone at the old stone stone in it's it's all of this stuff, it's hanging out with you, Mike, down at, at, at the fire pit, you know, down by Jeff the Creek. Whiskey River. Yep. It's Whiskey whiskey River, you know, hey, doing their little thing on, on doing the, the thing on, on, you know, America's Got Talent and stuff as well. It's Terry flying his planes over the yeah, distilleries. The yeah, that's a whole different take on the whole bourbon culture thing. Folks are going through every, every episode right now, and I tell but, you what. Early and that's a that's a road you want to go down right there, yeah, I think. Yeah. And, but but what I've enjoyed about you know p people in in the in the bur whole bourbon culture thing is they you know hey you'll drop it drop a hundred and thirty bucks on a bottle, but you're giving back to society too because that's one thing I've loved about the bourbon culture you know like Lexington Bourbon Society and, right. and the whole Ronald McDonald House thing and and the charities and some of the money you know people. Hey, I appreciate the life that I'm having. Let me get back to and Noah a, down yeah. at Pit Barrel Cooker Company with his, uh, you know, with you know talking to the vets about you know how yep. to how to readjust after coming back from the war and, and 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 you know and then Liz Liz and Jeff over there with their whole take on bourbon barrel rehab. Like, hey, let's take something that's supposed to be no good to anybody a, a, a barrel and let's make something out of it. And I'm I'm going, man, the bourbon culture is all of this stuff. You know, it's yeah. just crazy. So I think, you know, I think it's fair to say that part of this podcast, probably the most important thing that this podcast does is we're kind of uncovering the best of bourbon culture. Kind of, you know, picking it out, putting it on air and letting our people hear it. Because it's not just master distillers and their product. It's also the people that enjoy drinking it that make the music, that make the food, 
that make the cakes that hang out with the horses that hang yeah. out with the horses you know just the the whole culture and um you know just enjoy the bourbon but understand that it's kind of the underlying theme here you know the real thing is the people and the story they bring and and that's what makes this podcast different and and, and bourbon culture to me is about the moment you know, those, those special moments, whether you're breaking a bottle with somebody or you're having a mint julep at the track, whether it's Santa Anita with the Breeders' Cup or, you know, Churchill Downs or Lexington, you know, with uh, Keeneland and opening, you know, and Preakness and Belmont. You know, there's there's that aspect. And then there's the fireplace and a you know, little fire this down is by like the a, creek. This is like that uh, <laughs> World of Sports 20-minute reel, you know, where they show the last 20 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, it's it's all of this stuff, man. Yeah. And, and and if I could give you guys anything that I would like to see down the road, hey, keep the stories alive. Yeah. I think I think we got some great ideas coming up here. Um, just going out to that the Kentucky Bur- uh, Barbecue Festival out in Danville. I think uh, hopefully I get some good stories. I out imagine there the people. stories that you're going to get because oh, you're going to get the barbecue aspect, and then you know Pat and Shane will be there as well. You know, and who knows who all will be there, and you'll get some bourbon connoisseurs, and I, I don't know. I think you're going to get a, a, just a big mix of a lot of good stuff out there. That may be a two parter. You never know. Never know. I think we got some good concepts coming up for some other episodes and um, just trying to still ca- capture that, like you said, that bourbon culture, people's own bourbon road they've been down and and to just to get inside their head a little bit and say, hey, what's bourbon to you? You know, every time I what's that bourbon culture mean to you? You know, I, I think that's what drew me to your guys' episodes is you started talking about. Hey man, we got this bourbon right here. We want to taste it. And, um, you know, tell us about your experience with bourbon and how you got into this, this job and, and what do you do? What do you drink every day? Um, yeah. what do you got on the shelf at your house? What's your daily drinker? You know, um, to me that some of those stories like Bo, the, the interviews I got to go along with you guys and listen to, um, and Pat and Shane, their, their stories, um, just some awesome stories that that come out of those guys, and we sit down and talked over a, a, a glass of bourbon, and sometimes this 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 brown juice will make people open up a little bit. Yeah, yeah we've noticed that the second pour seems always the <laughs> second half of the show always seems to be a little better than the first. Oh, I wonder yeah. why that is, you know. <laughs> well, Randy, I want to say before we sign off here one more time, cheers to you, my friend. It's been a great run. And uh, we're going to have you on the show many times in the future, I hope, as you visit and as we visit you. And uh, you know what? I, I tell our listeners to look for a blog from time to time. As oh, you, you know, you never know how, how the spirit moves. So <laughs> that's right. We'll be up there. And then when the bourbon colonel or gentleman sage or whatever I want to call myself that day puts his little earplugs in, you know, I hope to hear some good stuff from you guys. So, I'm, Randy, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing some of your music you make. You know, it's coming. It's just uh, I've spent the last many years working on the left side of my brain, and you know that, working for the federal government. Both of you guys do. They have a concrete, sequential way of making you think, and I want to go abstract abstract random for a while and just uh, work on that right side of the brain and get that creative the creative juices going, and uh, who knows what might happen in the future. So, yeah. All right. Well, Randy, Mike. Future's bright. Cheers, my friends. Let's have a little more of that uh, Sam Houston. Let's do it. All right. Sounds good. We do appreciate all of our listeners, and we'd like to thank you for taking time out of your day to hang out with us here on the Bourbon Road. We hope you enjoyed today's show, and if so, we would appreciate if you'd subscribe and rate us a five-star with a review on iTunes. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Bourbon Road. That way you'll be kept in the loop on all The Bourbon Road happenings. You can also visit our website at thebourbonroad.com to read our blog, listen to the show, or reach out to us directly. We always welcome comments or suggestions. And if you have an idea for a particular guest or topic, be sure to let us know. And again, thanks for hanging out with us. 